Hey everyone, so it's summertime, it's really hot outside, man sometimes you just want to escape the heat, but if it's hot outside and you're hot, you definitely know that your laptop is also hot too. So I have a really nice one, I have an HP Omen laptop, and it's really cool, I have a, this one actually has different stickers everything on it, but I have a nice HP Omen laptop, and I have it in here for just kind of like a maintenance thing, just kind of for repair. And we're, what we're going to be doing today is because it's getting a little bit too warm. The customer thinks it's a little bit uncomfortable and uh, they just want to get some maintenance. Summertime, you know, we want to definitely make sure we stay cool. And your PC also wants to stay cool too. So what can we really do for a PC? What's the most important thing you can do? Especially if you have a gaming one like this one, this is the HP Omen. Again, um, what we could do is we could do a nice little tune-up for it, but a great tune-up for it and to keep the temperatures low and to keep your frame rates high is we can add some thermal paste, make sure the fans are clean, do all those type of things. So doing a thermal paste, what it's going to do is it's a thermal compound that actually does go on the processor. It's going to be the little layer that's transferring heat from the processor to a heat sink. And um, it's really important if you put that on, especially if you, if you play games, to put that on maybe every six months, every year, two years. Definitely don't want to make sure that it gets hardened up and then your temperature is going to rise. It's going to get hot. And especially for laptops, you definitely want to make sure that you keep this cooled down. Now, you can do this on desktops as well, but we're going to be showing it on HP Omen today. And also, there's lots of other laptops you can do it. So, let's just get right into it. I'll show you guys how to do it. It's pretty simple, straightforward, but there's a few things you got to look out for. But before we really get started, um, I just want to let you guys know we love giving you guys entertainment. We love giving you guys information out there. But we don't really reach enough people and we want to reach a lot more people and the YouTube algorithm is a little bit strange and it requires a few things uh, to really shoot our videos out there. We want to put it out in the stars so everyone can actually go ahead and see it even when you're looking down. All you have to do is actually just hit that like button. It would really help us a lot and we would really appreciate it and it will sp help spread the word to everyone and put our video out in the stars so everyone can go ahead and see them. And we can show everyone repairs. We do lots of cool day recoveries, MacBook spill, liquid spills, and lots of cool stuff even like this. So let's just get right into it. I know we're doing like an Omen today, but a lot of these ones are, are pretty similar, especially if they're more modern. Um, what you could do is you could just remove the back there, and usually it's just, everything's exposed there, so it's nothing too complicated. It's nothing too daring. Uh, I know some of them could be pretty intimidating. If you have like really old ones, I hope you wouldn't have or be playing uh, lots of games on super, super old um, laptops. Well, I guess you should be, right? But anyway, so a lot of them, you can just remove the bottom cover here. There's usually just like a bunch of screws you can go ahead and uh, take up. And uh, you should at least have everything exposed to you there, so it makes it a little bit easier to be doing this. So we're going to have to do that. Let's go ahead and remove the screws. Okay, so all the screws are out. Now we just need to open it bomb cover sometimes you might just need a little thing or some fingernails to get underneath it okay now we just want to undo the battery there's a battery connection here it's pretty uh, straightforward to these go let's do that uh, we just undid that if it makes it a little bit easier sometimes what you can do is here you can do something like this too you can maybe like unscrew it that does help a lot maybe just to remove the battery connection sometimes it could be a little bit jammed in there or just get it off at least enough where you can uh, take it off or something like that. So we can just remove that. If you have a little bit of trouble, you don't have to. Now we're presented obviously with our laptop and we have heatsink here and we have a very nice heatsink. It's very thick. That's always what you want. That's why laptops are thick nowadays because they have a nice big heatsink and it's going to be dissipating heat. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we remove, uh, you know, you're not going to completely remove the screws because usually the screws have like a spring in them and the whole point of it is is to at least get it all down. There's a number order you can go in, um, but if you're removing all of them, it's not a really big deal. It's a little bit more important when you have, when you're actually just going to be redoing it. Uh, we're putting it back. Now this is gonna come off a little bit. Sometimes you might need to have some that actually do have, like uh, maybe are connected to something else as well. Maybe the fans are connected, you may have to do that. So there's two more in the corner here. I'm sure there's one over here too, yep. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lift this up. Let's see how it looks under here right now. You can see that there's some dust. This is actually great. So we can remove this dust here. And you want to make sure you keep on at least the thermal pads because the thermal pads 
are definitely um, need to be there. You don't want to remove them. If you want to replace them or if they look a little bit worn, you can definitely do that. Ours look actually fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and clean off this part. All I want to do is be cleaning off this, the old thermal paste here, as well as maybe just using like a little brush. I can actually show that. And the fans actually look pretty clean, so I'm not too worried about that. But we can do this. Let's not do it over the laptop. Let's do it away from the laptop. So you can go with something like this. Uh, you can use a compressed air can, or we actually have this really cool one here. I'll actually link this down below. This is like an electronic one. It actually does have USB-C charging you can do. And you can actually just blow it here. Make sure it's all clean inside. Looks to be pretty good. Looks like fans actually look very nice. Now what we want to do is um, we want to clean off the old thermal paste here. But let's take a little paper towel. We can actually clean this off. So we can use this. You could do it. I would usually like to do this over like a trash can or something because it's a little bit hard. And it's just going to kind of get everywhere. But you could do this too. There, that's nice. It's a little bit hardening. It's not terrible. Now we have some old thermal paste here. You can see there's a lot of open spots. See that? Those are pockets. That's not good. That means the contact hasn't really been made. Obviously, it's going over a heatsink where it's going to touch the other part there, but there can be pockets. And you don't want that. And that could be some of the hot spots that are on there. So you want to make sure this is going to be at least nicely covered as well. Now, I usually like to take something like this to actually get in between because this can still. Especially if you have really old therm thermal paste, this can actually still be a problem. So you can take a little edge. I usually like to use like a little plastic edge here. And you see how this kind of gets around this part? And you see how it's raising? These are a little bit harder parts to get. But it's going to do a good job at least cleaning that. And this is actually a really good example too because they're blocking the rest of the components around the processor with, um, with, this, with the black tape. It's going over, under here. See that? See all this extra just came off? That's good. So that's why I like using this part. And obviously we can wipe off the rest. We can go under maybe like our, or on a trash can or just use our blower and just kind of clean off the rest here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so we have thermal paste here. And the whole point of uh, thermal paste, what you want to do, um, I'm not going to say one brand is better than the other. Uh, you probably, the, the idea of whenever you get thermal paste is to have the highest amount of silver you can. That's going to be the best way for heat transfer, right? So try to get that if you can. You know, all we're going to do is, I always like to start in the middle, then I like to dab it up on each side. So I'm going to try to make sure it gets all the way around there. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it definitely has to cover up because you know, the whole point of it is when it does lower, again, when you put the heat sink back on, it's going to actually make sure that um, it's spread properly, especially with all the pressure. Now people are going to say, oh, it's too much, oh, it's too little, oh, it's not enough, oh, it's too little, whatever. This is definitely a good amount. This will be okay. Um, you want to make sure that you at least cover uh, air pockets. Um, more is always better than less, but too much is always bad too. So if you're not sure, if you can't see enough, you definitely want to put enough. This would be totally fine. This is going to spread very well when I put this back on. I'm going to make sure everything else looks good, but make sure you clean off as really as best you possibly can, and then you can put it back on. You want to make sure all the other fans, all the fins are good. And you want to make sure you put this on right the first time. You don't want to misalign it or anything because the first time is the, the best chance for where it's going to go ahead and spread. But it looks like it's going to fit only in one spot anyway. And we have to tuck this underneath here. It's going to fit and it's going to fall perfectly. There we go. So we don't have to move anything. Now, all we're really doing now is obviously we're going to be putting this. Now, I would probably recommend when you put the screws back in, go with the order it says. There's usually some numbers on the sides here. You see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you don't have to tighten them super tight. Tighten them a little bit on each side first, and then we'll go back and do, just do like a torque, like a car tire or something. That's a better way to do it. But same with screws, everything too. But there's a reason it's there. It's not there for no reason, you know. Go with engineers. They're smarter than all of us. They're the ones who made it, <laughs> right? They have suggestions, everything. So let's go ahead, uh, do that. Now I'm just going to torque each one. And you never want to strip it. Once you feel it's tight, that's good. That's all you, you need to do. You don't need to try to screw it in as far as you possibly can. Six and seven. And we had, what, two screws on the side here? Uh, 
I'm going to angle this down because this is actually a little bit of a pain to undo and put back on. There we go. So I just angled that enough so this gets in there and then I could just kind of adjust it as I go. But I'm not going to totally plug it in because I still want to make sure that this is going to be screwed in all the way. So let's do that. Just put the battery back. If you disconnected fans, definitely remember to, to reconnect the fans. If you moved anything else, definitely make sure that you remember to put stuff back in. And that's really about it. We'll just be screwing everything back. And we're just going to put a back cover, put all the screws back, and let's go ahead and see how it is, how it feels. All right, guys, and that's how you change the thermal paste, clean the fans, however you want to call it, on this is an HP Omen. There's also lots of other laptops you can do as well. Definitely make sure that you do it every now and then, or at least get a shop to actually do it if you're not too sure, not too confident in doing it. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of these videos like this. We also have one where we show an MSI laptop doing this as well. If you have those models, you might want to check out the other video uh, doing it. Sometimes you have to move the whole entire laptop to do that. Ugh, it's definitely not fun, but go ahead, check it out. We'll show you guys how to do it. And um, thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.